who lost her father during this period that we had uh, closed, and others of you who may have lost a sibling or a child or a friend, we want to take this opportunity to say that may the Almighty have mercy on their souls and may they rest in peace. Let us take this opportunity, honorable members, to bow our heads in uh, remembering those that have fallen. I thank you, honorable members. This pandemic has severely tested our resolve and resilience as a nation. As parliamentarians, we may have taken it for granted to walk in the hallowed corridors of parliament precinct. We now realize that it is a wonderful privilege afforded to us now that we have to exercise social distancing and engage remotely and virtually. If and when we return, we shall all look at life differently with a fresh perspective and undoubtedly with much greater appreciation and gratitude. As we prepare to tackle our tasks of the sixth session of parliament, let us do so mindful of what our founding father, His Excellency President Nelson Khalid Mandela said back in 1996, I quote, when a man has done what he considers to be his duty for his people and his country, he can rest in peace, close quote. This serves as a reminder of why we all here across the political spectrum that, that divides us. We are here united in our commitment to serve our nation and our land. We are also reminded that our portfolio cuts across some of the most challenging and sometimes contentious issues confronting South Africa today. The colonial project, which began here in the Western Cape, in Cape Town particularly, as a quest for a refreshment station to provide fresh water and agricultural produce for the marauding exercise of conquest and the search for spices. Today, over 26 years into our nascent democracy, agriculture remains center stage in our collective lives and our critical priority of feeding the nation, providing food security, eradicating hunger and poverty, and overcoming the ravages of inequality and underdevelopment. Land reform remains central to our collective responsibility to engage the process of transformation of the South African landscape and land ownership patterns bequeathed to us by three and a half centuries of colonialism and land alienation. The blight of decades of apartheid that entrenched disposition, dislocation and social dysfunction. Up until today, our rural areas in particular bear testimony to the legacy of skewed and unequal development and the weighty tasks that lies ahead of us. This is the great South African story. We can choose to be victims of history or agents of change in crafting a new narrative. I am reminded of a quote from Orondeati, Roy's bestseller of 1997, the God of small things. I quote, you know how they end. 
yet you listen though you don't in the way that although you know that one day you will die you live as though you want in the great stories you know who lives and who dies who finds love and who doesn't and yet you want to know again that is their mystery and their magic close coat let us honorable members in this pandemic conditions strive to create a new narrative for 2021 one in which we at the end of the journeys can say with pride and peace in our hearts we have done all that we could for our nation and our people honorable members our agenda today is a quite intense and we have a number of uh, issues to uh, overcome and get through if i may uh, go through the agenda we will be having a briefing from the commission on restitution of land rights uh, on uh, 2019 and 2020 annual report then we will go into questions and comments then we have a, a briefing from the office of the value general that being the ovg on the 2019 and 2020 annual report then we shall uh, have uh, questions and comments before we get into the program honorable members let me uh, take this opportunity to welcome the honorable minister mamutidiza to render opening remarks thank you thank you very much uh, chairperson of the committee uh, ngosi uh, mandela to members of the portfolio committee to senior officials of the department staff of parliament as well as the guests who are there uh, online thank you very much for your opening address uh, chairperson indeed giving a context of the work that uh, we are doing in the midst of the pandemic there had been some green shoots particularly with respect to how the sector has performed none of us would have anticipated the bumper season on the maize crop that we received particularly given the conditions under which we were operating and for the three quarters of 2020 the sector performed uh, very well it showed growth when others were actually showed decline i also would want to appreciate the work that the department also did amidst the challenges to ensure that we continue to open market, market access for our farmers particularly in the international market we were excited that last year particularly in east asia japan we were able to have some agreements that would allow for our produce to go there and i must say chairperson one is also excited that the citrus industry has also performed very well we have been able to access the american market and also the european market seems to be looking favorably in terms of the goods that we have when it comes to the fruit industry and therefore would like to congratulate our farmers and farm workers for the work that they've continued albeit the challenges that we're facing but there is more that still needs to be done we've seen the impact of alois uh, the tropical cyclone that have visited our shores we still continuing to have heavy rains in some parts of our country particularly the eastern uh, seaboard when you look at mpumalanga kzn in the north in limpopo and some parts of western cape free state even before the cyclone have had heavy rains in some parts of the northern cape we are monitoring very well because on one hand 
it is very exciting to have such rains, but on the other, the continuing a uh, rainy uh, period might actually affect some of uh, the crops. And we hope that uh, farmers will take necessary precautions when they get the signals as we do to ensure that they protect their livestock, their irrigation machine to make sure that such do not actually um, get uh, damaged. We know that in some instances, not everything can be saved and we must continue to do so. Chairperson, the department will be presenting to the committee, particularly those entities that will be presenting today, following the reports of the Auditor General last week. Today, the entities will be making their presentation on the national report, giving details on their spending, as well as challenges that they are facing, which might have resulted on the difficulties that the Auditor General have picked up. We have taken note as the executive, but also the department of the issues that the Auditor General have raised and what we need to do to correct. And in certain instances, what we need to do to support our entities. The Auditor General for the first time audited the Commission of Restitution of Land Rights which follows an observation that the AG had made in the 2019 audit that in the view of the Auditor General, in terms of the act uh, of the restitution of land rights, the commission is an entity and therefore it must also account directly for its expenditure on its own, which is why this year the Auditor General decided to undertake that audit. There are certain issues, obviously, that would require us to make adjustments on how we support the commission to be able to execute this task and be able to actually ensure that they now have their financials uh, independent of the department in the way in which the Auditor General has made observations. The Office of the Valor General as they would be explaining, has shown some improvement, particularly on its uh, financials. Yes, there are still some challenges on how we can continue to increase the pace of how the Village General's Office support the work of land reform across the board. In respect of the Ingonyama Trust Board, the AG did reflect had displeasure and challenges on some of the issues that relates to the financials of the Ingonyama Trust Board. Some of the issues that the Auditor General raised related to the irregular expenditure, a matter that she was able to meet with the finance committee of the board to actually indicate where her concerns were in the manner in which the information was actually presented and where there are differences be between the AG and the entity on some of those matters. The other issue that the Auditor General raised in respect of the ITB, ITB related to the in, inconclusive accounting in her view for land and equipment of the trust that the Auditor General was a bit concerned about on how she, as the Auditor General, can be able to make an audit, audit opinion. So these are the matters that uh, the Auditor General have raised. I just want to share with members that yesterday, I did have a meeting with the Board of Ingonyama Trust, again, to raise the issues fully with the board and look at what is it that the board needs to do to deal with these matters. And I'm sure when the board present, they would indicate on some of the agreements that we reached on how we're going to go forward. But we've also agreed that we will be seconding staff to the ITB so that we can actually give support and be able to assist the management in the work of that uh, institution. I would like therefore Chairperson to now hand over to you and allow the entities as you have indicated to make the presentations. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Honorable uh, Minister Mamutitiza. Let us uh, now, Honorable Members, invite the Commission on Restitution of Land Rights. Uh, Mamu Kobot. Um. Nepilele namtla jema. Ya pila gakulu. Atu Mandela ndia mule la gakulu ngetubo nika lon. Namtla nji. Mule la ngendoba ndi sa pila. Gweli tila wani lispete. Manditi to the honorable members. To the minister, to the deputy ministers. Um the DG uh, Value General, uh, honored uh, guests, colleagues, uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Um, my presentation will be flighted by um, um, Uralf, who is going to be supporting me. I am uh, in the meeting with um, the Deputy uh, Land Claims Commissioner, Ms. Cindy Benyane, the Regional Land Claims Commissioner, uh, Mr. Lejuane Maputa, and Mr. Sanjay Singh, who is uh, corporate support. They will be assisting me in um, taking uh, any questions that uh, the committee might have. And again, thank you very much, Chair. I will start then um, with the presentation outline where um, we are giving an account for the 2019-2020 financial year as requested by the portfolio committee. Part one will be the general information around the vision mission and the likes. Uh, part B, performance information. C is financial information, which will be um, presented by um, Mr. Sanjay Singh. Uh, part D would be governance and um, E, human resource management. Next slide, please. Uh, I'll go quickly uh, into the initial slides. Um, and just uh, again to confirm that Section 21 of the Restitution Act requires that we present, uh, submit our annual report to Parliament on the 1st of June every year, which is something that we do. And generally, our vision is uh, on the screen. I'm not going to read uh, the vision and the mission. I will move to the next slide. And I will move to the next slide on the values. And um, thank you. Ne next slide, please. Uh, the general information, Ralph, I'm not going to talk to you. Can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, on the mandate. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ralph. Uh, I just wanted to highlight some of the issues that um, we were de dealing with uh, in the last financial year, one being uh, the judgment uh, in the Constitutional Court, Speaker of the National Assembly versus uh, Land Access Movement of South Africa, which is what we refer to as the Lamosa II judgment, which was handed down on the 19th of March 2019, uh, uh, where the Chief Land Claims Commissioner was ordered to file six monthly uh, reports on six monthly intervals uh, to the Land Claims Court. Uh, this related, uh, as you are aware, Chair, to the new order claims uh, that have been interdicted by the Constitutional Court, uh, meaning that we cannot deal with the claims that were lodged in 2014 uh, and to 2018. And we were required to then submit reports as part of the order to the Land Claims Court to give an account of uh, the performance of the Commission. Uh, to date, we have submitted uh, three reports to the Land Claims Court, and the last one we submitted on the 19th of November 2020. And we also presented to the Portfolio Committee the report. 
And as I've already indicated, the court confirmed that uh, we cannot deal with the 2014 uh, new order claims until uh, we are finalized, uh, we finalize the old order claims or a new amendment of the legislation has been introduced. And uh, subsequently, when we were in the land claims court, uh, we were uh, ordered by the acting uh, judge president that we needed to refer all matters that the commission is unable to resolve administratively through section 42D uh, to the court. That is a, a, a process that we are undertaking with the court under section 14 of the Restitution Act. Another issue that we needed uh, to um, register chair, is that of the road to autonomy um, and the commission's uh, attempt in developing a business case for approval. This is important, especially in the context of the presentation that was had last week where the Auditor General gave an account of the work of uh, the commission. And um, so we are presenting and confirming that we are in the process of number one, preparing, uh, we've prepared a cabinet a memo requesting approval for autonomy. Uh, we uh, have already prepared a business case uh, documentation outlining the feasibility study, the situational analysis, the budgetary implications, the strategic plans, towards uh, our road to autonomy. We are also aware that there might be possibility for review of the amendment I mean, of the legislation so that we are able to uh, uh, become autonomous. I think it's, at this point, it is important for me to say the issue of autonomy is one that has been discussed um, for uh, a while and we have presented to the committee that under project Kuyasa, we have uh, uh, had uh, a lot of work that we've already done and that Project Guiasa comes or emanates from um, Operation Pakisa. So it's not separate from Operation Pakisa. It is a result of Operation Pakisa. We had made recommendations on how the commission uh, should do certain things. And uh, it's important also to note that in terms of what uh, the minister uh, indicated in her opening address, that the AG uh, has indicated that the commission is a commission uh, that is, should be independent in law from the department, um, that when they make that assessment, we need to understand that they are referring to a commission that consists of the Chief Land Claims Commissioner, the regional Land Claims Commissioner and the Deputy uh, Land Claims Commissioner, as well as uh, their support and the relevant parties in the, uh, the commission that deal only with research. Because in the context of the interpret of what the commission is and the obligation, we are required to receive claims, investigate them and recommend the claims for settlement. So I think that 